Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Citizens of Gotham, you come here for the truth. Because everybody else in Gotham is full of it. <laughs> um, so we've been following on this show, uh, Bitcoin specifically. I have a Bitcoin playlist on YouTube and uh, all my videos are on rockfin.com, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. And I did a video last week and we had Rosie Tran on the show talking about Elon Musk uh, deliberately manipulating. First, uh, you know, first people, Bill Maher puts out that stupid segment saying Bitcoin's a scam. He didn't, and he didn't even know what he was talking about. He's like, Dogecoin, Bitcoin, they're all the same. It's just like saying, it's like someone, it's like 30 years ago, 20, 30 years, you know, 30 years ago when the internet started and someone's like, oh, there's these websites where they're trying to get your Nigerian lottery money. And then there's this Amazon. They're all a bunch of hooey. That's like, they're all, you can't compare <laughs> Amazon and a website that are scamming people are very different. While I'm very critical of Jeff Bezos practices, uh, Amazon is a very functional, uh, website. Not, I'm not supporting Amazon, but just the compare, it's like comparing a big website like that to the websites that are scams and saying that they're all scams. That's as, in essence what Bill Maher did. And then, so, so Elon Musk, um, put out a statement saying we're not selling any of our, of our Tesla is not selling any of our Bitcoin, but we're not accepting it right now until we find more cleaner solutions which is complete. He's doing it to do, and he drove the price down. The price was in the mid 50, it was like 50 between 55 and 60,000. It went as low as 42,000, which it hasn't been that low in quite a while. Um, and I guarantee you he and his rich buddies are buying up Bitcoin. They don't think it's bullshit. And that narrative that Bill Maher was pushing and Elon Musk. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if Bill Maher and Elon Musk are friends and Elon said, Hey, put a segment out talking about this, or just put that bug in his ear. Like it doesn't even have to be that colluded. They could just be talking at a cocktail party and Bill Maher goes, oh, I'm going to do a segment on this. And Elon goes, yeah, you should knowing that. And then Elon will text or tweet right around that time, knowing the price will drop and all these rich guys will buy it up. They're buying the dip. That's what they're doing because they know you can't, they know the technology behind Bitcoin specifically, not the altcoins, but specifically Bitcoin. You can't change it, stop it, right, turn it off. You can't do that. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. But I want to go into, I want to show you how this, I'm going to debunk this whole Bitcoin is bad for the environment because let's put it up against traditional banking. I actually got this, um, this is ARK Investment Management Company, and I saw this on Crypto Casency. Um, energy expenditure across monetary and banking systems. Here's the banking system. This is energy expenditure. This is the yearly cost. This is gold mining. This is Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin uses 7.8% of the banking system's total energy cost. So this was deliberately used by Elon Musk and probably got Bill Maher. Maybe he bought, if, if we find out Bill Maher bought a bunch of Bitcoin during this, right after he lived a video, then we know that there was a fix in there. Maybe not because he's just dumb and out of touch and doesn't, anytime a comedian starts doing a, these kids today, and there was some, all oh, these millennials and their Bitcoin and their hullabaloo and their hula hoops and poodle skirts and that Elvis Presley shaking his hips around in a suggestive manner, buying Dogecoin. Like it all sounds like just the dumb older generation who's out of touch. And not all older people, not all baby boomers are out of touch. There's a lot of baby boomers that are still in touch. They watch this show. So I, I, that's not a slam on, on, on baby boomers in general, but that's what Bill Maher was saying. He was doing a, these kids today was part of the slant on his segment, which I already did go watch that video. So either he's just woefully ignorant and loves shooting his mouth off when he doesn't know what he's talking about could very well be the case. If you've ever watched his show, he used to be great. And now he's just this rich Hollywood guy that doesn't know what he's talking about. That just defends the powerful and criticizes Jill Stein, like an idiot, like an idiot. Um, he doesn't even understand how the electoral college works, I guess. So we're debunking what he said, and we're debunking what Elon Musk put out in, in their official statement last week, which deliberately nosedived the price. 
And Elon Musk is, is putting stuff on Twitter, you know, because he's got tens of millions of Twitter followers. So I'm going to show you more evidence to back this up. You have Tim Draper. Has anyone calculated the energy as CO2 of existing banking system uses, the buildings, the paper, the bankers themselves? Maybe Elon should not accept fiat for, for cars because they said Tesla's going to stop it. We're going to hold off accepting Bitcoin right now until there's cleaner solutions. So when an Elon announced several months ago that Bitcoin is accepted, being going to be accepted by Tesla, the price shot up. When he said Tesla is buying, you know, $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, the price went up. And now he's deliberately doing this to bring the price down. He knows what he's doing. So it's, it's, it's bullshit. Sorry. It's bullshit. This backs up what this guy, this question is asking, right? Let's get into the specifics. I just went online and did a cursory search. I went to Ecosia.org, which is a non-for-profit search engine. Don't use this CIA one. And there are 5,275 local and national banks offering banking services in the United States with nearly 83,000 branches in 10,182 cities. So let's think about all the Bitcoin mining, but wait a minute, this is just in the U S so we know Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining is all over the planet. It's whoever's using a computer to mine Bitcoin. So it's all over the planet, but this is just the United States. So think about all this. These are all the different banks. Bank. So this is, this isn't just, so this is every credit union, every, everyone, right? All the credit unions, all the, like there's 5,275 institutions, basically banking institutions with 83,000 branches. So that's just, just, just what is the energy draw on that? What is the total energy use of that? What is the, the paper, the air conditioning, the internet, just for all, just to function all of these brick and mortar physical structures. It's not even going into money printing, all of that. They all have websites. I guarantee you that everyone does online banking now. And there's still people driving their cars to a local branch. Sometimes you can't do online banking or you know, like, you know, a lot of banks, you can take a photo of a, of a, of a check that gets sent to you, but it doesn't work or the camera can't read it, or it, you only are allowed certain limits or something. And you need to go into the bank. You don't have direct deposit. There's still, so let's, let's figure in the driving to the bank gas on top of that. Oh, wait, Graham, you forgot ATMs. Good. I'm glad you asked. Um, I just typed in ATMs in the U S Americans love ATMs. They have loads of them. 173 ATMs per hundred thousand people at the last count. Specifically, there are over 400,000 ATMs in the U S on top of the almost 83,000 branches. So 83,000 physical bank branches and 400,000 ATMs. All those ATMs, the little ones in the store, the bank ones, the whatever, the gas, you see those little ATMs all over the place, right? For an ATM with two air conditioners and lighting, the average daily power consumption comes around 48 kilowatt per hour. So total consumption for banks during a year on, only on those three metrics is around, and I'm rounding 26 terawatts an hour, I believe that is, on servers, 87 terawatts on branches, and 26 terawatts an hour on ATMs for a total close to 140 terawatts a year. So 
So, yeah, this is traditional banking. There's a little Bitcoin down there. Gold is even more. Okay. <laughs> so, once again, Elon Musk knows this. Bill Martin might not know this because he's just a, 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 a Hollywood jackass that makes $10 million a year and doesn't need to know what he's talking about and just wants to make a new rule. I'm a pompous idiot who's not funny anymore. And I sound like some old man who's like, these kids today with their Bitcoin and their rock and roll music, those guys from Liverpool with those crazy haircuts, I don't like it. John Lennon said the Beatles are better than Jesus. New rule, Jesus is always great. That's what you sound like, Bill Maher. <laughs> but most assuredly, Elon Musk knows this. He's this very smart man. He's a tech guy. He runs a company that makes electric cars and solar panels and rocket ships. Do you really think he wasn't aware of this number? Elon Musk also knows that if he were to come out and just tweet this and go enough with the Bitcoin is bad for the environment and put this out there, everyone would go, see? And Bitcoin's price would go up. So he deliberately nosedived this. And I and I must say, there's a reverence for billionaires in our society. And these Silicon Valley guys are so cool. And I watch a lot of, so BitBoy, Crypto, The Moon, Crypto Casey, Altcoin Daily are the four main shows I watch. They're all millennials. This is not a slam on millennials. I, millennials have had to deal with active shooter drills in school and having all their wealth taken away and <laughs> watch their parents go bankrupt. So this isn't a slam on millennials, but people in their 30s and younger who were raised on technology, I hear some of them talk like Elon. And I've just watched those shows specifically when Elon Musk was releasing stuff that was helping the Bitcoin price. They talked about how great he was. And I was like, easy now, hold on. He said, we'll coo who we want to coo, which is offensive to me. He's willing to kill people and destroy people's lives in Bolivia and other countries just so he can get minerals for his batteries. He doesn't give a shit. And I'm glad now that some of these people that are really in love with him or were in love with him are waking up. BitBoy Ben is like, the gloves are off on his latest live stream. He's like, the gloves are off. I'm, I'm going after this dude because he's fucking with people's livelihoods, which is exactly what he's doing. Carl at the moon was like, uh, I don't mean to hate on because he's a really seems like a really nice guy who doesn't want to say like mean shit, which I respect that. I don't have that problem, Carl. I, I love your show. You've helped me. Uh, we've never met. I'd love to have you on this show, but just we have different personality types. Elon Musk is a piece of shit who's deliberately manipulating the market and hurting your finances and mine and anybody that's in, ever invested in Bitcoin. So, um, but I'm glad to see all these people realize Elon Musk is, is just a billionaire piece of shit, just like Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is, is, is critical of Bitcoin, but that's just because Warren Buffett, 75% of um, Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio is banks. So he's made his money with traditional banks. He's been bailed out by the federal government twice. So he doesn't want decentralized currency. Elon Musk understands the technology of Bitcoin and realizes there's nothing you can do to stop it. So he's going to just try to make as much money as he can. So when Elon Musk pushed the price up by tweeting, oh, I'm buying a bunch and Tesla's going to accept it, that pushed the price up. So he knew full, he knew good and goddamn well that when he tweeted this, the price would come down. He knows this. And I'm glad that some of these crypto shows are waking up that Elon Musk is a, just a weasel piece of shit. He's part of the thing that these crypto channels who, who are way more knowledgeable on crypto than I am and have been in this space way longer than I have. And I thank them. I've learned a lot from all those shows. I'm glad that they're all waking up, that he is part of the central banking rich people power structure that Bitcoin is undermining. He's manipulating it. But they're waking up to the fact that he's no different than Janet Yellen or uh, Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos or any of these people. He's no different than them. And you think because he makes cool cars that he is. I'm glad he made the Tesla. It's 
it got a bunch of rich assholes who were going to buy a hundred thousand dollar gas guzzling, you know, car to buy one that's electric. It's better for the environment in the long run. Is the electric car the, the going to fix the environment's problems? Not by a long shot. Like I said, you got to get all these minerals and it's, it's a good get us off of oil step to get us towards a completely sustainable world, which will prevent but Elon Musk is just like, I'm going to make a bunch of money and build rockets and fly my billionaire buddies into outer space while the world burns because we destroyed it. So he's not your friend. He's not cool. He's not your buddy. There's all this reverence for him. Joe Rogan is, oh my God, because he's a very intelligent guy and says me I'm great interviews on Joe Rogan, but this is what rich assholes do that he doesn't care if he's crushed your Bitcoin portfolio. Elon Musk doesn't care. And he's well aware of this. He's doing this deliberately. Make no mistake, make no mistake, but I'm glad there's people out there like Tim Draper calling them out. And I'm glad there's just, I can just research and find this information out myself. So anybody who says this, point them to this video, all this traditional banking takes more of a power draw than Bitcoin mining and the central banks profit off of war. Look, the big banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you know, I've told you, I've, I, one of the first videos I did four and a half years ago was divest from these big banks. If you can move your money to a credit union or something like that, because the big banks invest in the Dakota access pipeline. They divest in pipe, they invest in pipelines. So divest, pull your money out. If you can do it, if you can. I get it. Sometimes it's hard. Some of the credit unions don't have as many business features. I've moved a bunch of accounts over to credit unions. Um, I still got to use Wells Fargo for some of my business stuff because it's just, and I don't like it, but I'm slowly moving away from Wells Fargo entirely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So back to the lesson at hand. Elon Musk is deliberately manipulating the price to buy the dip and all of his big billionaire bank friends are buying it. He's going to get help from the federal government is going to give him, subsidize him to do green energy, which he could do himself. He's not a good guy. And this Bitcoin is bad for the environment is a myth. Should we find more clean solutions for Bitcoin mining? Absolutely. We should mine, find clean solutions for ATMs. We should find clean solutions for cell phones, for everything. Can we make a compostable plastic cell phone? Because this is horrible for the environment. Do we want to talk about this? I could do a whole video on how awful cell phones are for the environment. And I guarantee you it's worse than Bitcoin. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. I'll keep speaking the truth because the corporate media, which includes Bill Maher's comedy show on HBO is pushing the corporate media narrative. Bill Maher is a net worth of a hundred million dollars. So he looks up to people like Elon Musk because people like Elon Musk helped Bill Maher become worth a hundred million dollars billionaires and powerful people at networks like HBO, which is owned by Time Warner Cable now, which is probably owned by Spectrum or Charter or whatever. There's like five media companies, that five multinational conglomerates that control the entire, that control 95% of all media. And again, I make this point. It's not just news, it's entertainment. So they deliberately had an entertainer go out there on his late night comedy show talking about how bad Bitcoin was for the environment to deliberately drive the price down so that the central banks can buy up as much of it as they can because there is only a finite number of Bitcoin. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. Altcoins can make more, whatever. There's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. And so the banks and the central bank and the billionaires know this. So don't fall for it. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. Thanks for supporting our show. Go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood blockchain cryptocurrency platform.
Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.